Today I'd like to talk to you about communication in maintaining adherence to medication and I title this inquiry based compliance enhancement which is a name I made up based on some specific thoughts I have that I hope you will find very useful and practical as we move through this quick discussion today. So what we have here is two people, Dr. Smith and Mr. Jones, and Dr. Smith has got this nagging suspicion that Mr. Jones is not taking his medication. Let's say he's on iron chelation therapy for his transfusion related iron overload. Now Dr. Smith as you can see has certain ideas uh, about why Mr. Jones is not taking his medication and what to do about it and Mr. Jones has got his own ideas on why he is not taking his medication and what he would like to do about it. And the question now is how will we get these two to reconcile and to communicate so that we can come to a good shared outcome. Now let's look at a few principles about communication. The people who know a lot about this say that you have something called open communication which is simply said a two-way street where both parties are able to freely share their ideas, express what they want to say, such as in a conversation or perhaps in a debate. The other form that, as you can imagine, is much more difficult in the setting of a patient-doctor relationship is one-way communication. And unfortunately, the doctors, us as doctors, are usually at fault here. It's usually us that speaks a lot and the patient that has to listen when we tell them what to do. And this closed form of communication uh, is more suited to a lecture or from your professor perhaps, or as I'm doing now, I'm giving you a little talk about communication in adherence. That is more closed. The question is, which one of these would be more suitable uh, to use when we're trying to address patient adherence? Now, let's just think about a few other things before I give you examples. Where do we want to get to with our communication? And this we shouldn't forget. Well, uh, they say that you want either a positive outcome, which basically means that all parties feel that they've been heard. Let's just say you feel heard. Okay. A negative outcome would be when uh, any one of the parties or both feel that they were not heard. And obviously this is not a very useful outcome because from that nothing good can come. One could also think about it in, the ter in terms of efficacy. And they would say that effective communication, effective communication would be when both parties feel that they have reached a desired outcome. Okay. So what we want is a type of communication where both parties feel that they have heard, they've been heard and where we get to the end and say, okay, we've reached a desired outcome. So now the question is, what sort of questions should you ask that are appropriate to get to these end goals? I'm going to give you a few examples and then you tell me what you think. Okay, so here we have some questions. Dr. Smith is asking Mr. Jones, are you taking your medicine regularly? Are you taking your medicine as you are supposed to? Are you compliant? Do you often forget to take your medicine? Well, if you look at these questions, what are the possible answers that Mr. Jones can give? And if you think about it, he doesn't really have many choices, does he? He can basically say uh, yes or no. And most patients, if you ask them these questions, unfortunately, if you say, are you taking your medication regularly, they'll probably say yes. Are you taking them as you're supposed to? They'll also say yes. Are you compliant? Yes, of course. Do you often forget to take your medication? No, of course not. It's interesting for, if you just think about this. Cancer patients overestimate their compliance by a factor of two, according to research. In other words, they, are, they think they are double as compliant as they really are. Doesn't mean they're lying, that's just their perception. 
So you can see that these yes, no type questions, although they're not completely closed, at least the patient gets one word in, either yes or no, they are almost closed. And that's not really what you want. We want something that is open. So let's look at some other questions and then you tell me what you think of those. So let's look at these questions. And what I'd like you to think about when you listen to them is what sort of underlying message do these questions convey? Mr. Jones, how do you feel about your treatment plan? What difficulties have you encountered in trying to follow your prescribed treatment plan? What do you perceive as the greatest benefits or disadvantages of the treatment? How easy is it to fit this into your schedule and life? So I think you would agree with me that these questions are open. These are the type of questions that I like to call inquiry-based compliance enhancement questions. Because the questions, although on the one hand they will give you information, they will also give you something else. Embedded in these questions, you are actually telling the patient something very important. You tell them that you care and patients feel that because you are suddenly interested in how they are feeling. You're interested in the difficulties they are encountering, in their perceptions, in how easy it is for them to accommodate this treatment into their life. And that makes a huge difference in terms of the patient's attitude towards the treatment, towards you as the doctor. And I think it's really important to realize that just by asking these questions, you will get information and much more than a yes or no for that. And you will get enhancement of compliance just by showing to the patient that you care. Somebody once said or spoke about this, he called this the doctor as medicine. And I like this term very much, the doctor as medicine. That we as doctors, just through our actions, the way we talk, the way we care, can actually have a positive effect often on our patients. Uh, lives and on their disease. So what we want to do is when we communicate with our patient, we want to see our patient as a partner. We don't want to see the patient as a passive, obedient recipient of our therapy and information. They are a part. And I always say to my patient, you know, this is a team effort. I'll do my part 100% and I need you to do your part 100%. So they are part of the team and they must feel like this. Secondly, we have to control the climate. So Ken Robinson spoke about education and he said it's not about command and control. It's all about climate control. And we need to create climate and environment in which a patient feels safe and feel that they have the freedom to speak about whatever concerns them with regards to their medication or anything else for that matter. And in that way, one can start improving also the compliance to therapy.